G'day to the first ever show of SA Wine Weekly. I'm your host, Nathan Goad, and with me today, we've got some amazing guests from the McLaren Vale region. We have got Brad. Evening, everyone. Evening. And we've also got Anna. G'day, everyone. So what we're going to do today is, we're just going to, well, tonight, is we're just going to run through personalities behind the wine so I guess my first question is and I'll put it to Brad is Zonte's footstep tell the punters that know nothing about it where it originated from sure and um, just give us something that even the people that do drink it regularly don't know about you well I guess I guess uh, Zonte's footstep was uh, given birth in 2003 we produced wines first out of Langhorne Creek with the vineyard that we had down in the, in the creek, uh, focusing on Shiraz Viognier and Viognier. Um, there was 13 of us at the beginning of the winery when we did it. Um, we thought we were all a bunch of know-it-alls, got together because we thought we were unemployable and got angry not doing what we wanted to do. And uh, guess what? We've learned from that day forth that uh, we don't really know a lot and we just keep learning. That's part of the ethos of the brand that we've taken on board now is that we learn something new every day, we experiment, we listen with two ears and we speak with one mouth. So, Excellent. Uh, so tell, tell us something right now that a seasoned Zonte's veteran wouldn't know about the winery. Oh, uh, not to put you on the spot or anything. But not to put it on the spot? Uh, 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 seasoned veteran that drinks our wines. Um, we're about to launch a whole range of product in cans. Ah. There's something that we haven't talked about on a public venue before. Now we're committed Ooh. to doing it. And we're talking lots of them, too. We we're talk, we're talking apps. industry first, then, are we? No. No, 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 no. no, nobody else knows about this in the industry? Uh, yeah, that would yeah, be fair. Pretty much it's it. It's been an in-house conversation. Yep. In fact, I didn't even know he was going to tell you just then. <laughs> And um, tell us about what you do within the winery. Um, so I guess uh, the way we like to think of it is that uh, Brad is our winemaker and all things um, that make the, make the beautiful stuff that we're going to taste today. And I do everything else. So with a great, fantastic team, um, uh, yeah, I run the business and uh, run the marketing and, and yeah, love it. Um, how many people have we got working at Zonto's at the moment? We did a little head count the other day. Head count's 13, I think we're up to now. So, yeah, Baker's it's dozen. really good. Excellent. And um, do you want to shout out to any of the people who've helped put tonight's together? Tonight's show together? Sure. Uh, Alice, Lauren, uh, well, Kendi. we may as well, Kendi, uh, we may as well say hi to Belle and Bella and Roy and Adam, Marty, Peter and I'm going to forget someone, Laurie. Mandy and Laurie mm -hmm. and uh, may as well say Matt. Yeah, look, there's Roy. Us. There they all are. Bella. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> Yep, there's the team. And um, team. Wh where are you here? Uh, that's at the General. That's our home in McLaren Vale. Okay. Look, Some tell people call it cellar door, but there's no cellars there, so it's just a door. Um, a little bit more than a cellar door, though. Isn't yeah, it? it's a wine bar. It's a, it's a meeting place where you can come in, you can enjoy our wine, we talk about our ethos. Um, you know, Gabe, who's our food evangelist, cooks different bits and bobs. He's very much an Asian-influenced um, foodie, so lots of different things that way. Uh, we also have a good friend who has a mobile pizza company, so we have uh, stand-up pizzas basically once a month, uh, live music, local brewery on tap. It's, it's our home away from home. Excellent. And um, what's happening with it at the moment? Obviously, with COVID and most <laughs> things there. Not a lot, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so but we are doing a little bit of a reno. So um, I, I, for those those people that have been in the general, uh, we have we have made some fairly major changes in, in the interior, and um, we're actually really excited about the uh, the next phase of this, um, in terms of, of bringing it really into the heart of what Zontes is all about. So Zontes has always been pretty progressive. What have you been doing during these? COVID crisis, what have you been doing to get the brand name out there? People can't come to the cellar door. What have you been doing that's different? <laughs> well, my favourite one, which you guys know well and truly about, is our online hosted events. So we're, um, we've actually got two booked in two weeks. I'm so excited. 
uh, where basically they um, they get to uh, well, Brad and I host through Zoom. Um, and they can order uh, two bottles of wine, and yeah, it's going to be great fun. I'm really excited. So if we've got anyone watching live, then feel free to ask some comments. You can ask comments about the winery, about the wines that we're going to um, taste in a minute, the food that we're eating, and um, ask why you've got a winemaker live. Why not ask them the questions that you've always wanted to know? And if you want to throw something curly out there, you can ask Anna whatever you like as well. So I think that... I'm getting a bit parched, so... Let's do it. Let's do it. Beautiful. So tell us a bit about the uh, first one that we're going to taste tonight, Brent. Th this is not red. Right. So um, Excalibur is actually our Adelaide Hill Sauv Blanc. We've been um, producing this for 12 vintages. Uh, as I said at the beginning, we started off with Shiraz, Viognier, and Viognier. And over that, what we've always done is we look to what market trends are, um, you know, what global trends are going on, what new varieties we've had access within our, our growing regions. And when the New Zealand Savalanche hit Australia in the mid-2000s and uh, basically dominated the market, I just wanted to get on my soapbox and showcase what a wonderful product that we can produce from the Adelaide Hills that's not New Zealand Sauv Blanc. So this is what it is. Love the label. Thank Sorry to, to cut you off straight away, but no, no. I, I love the label. Yep. Tell me a little bit about where, who designed the, the label and yeah. the relabeling wasn't that much. Right, let's, let's have a taste. So um, tell me what I should be looking for. So I noticed Brad being the winemaker is doing the swirl. I swirl white. Oops, I just spit one. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's, That's why right. I wear winemaker's it's white. All right. You right. went zoomed in at that stage. I'll just put it down. I'll put it down. Okay. Why are we swirling it? Easy. Look, I, this is part of the chemistry. When you look at wine molecules, anything... When you actually swirl it, you're actually causing them to collide. It warms the wine up. It creates the release of the aromatics. Um, that's basically it. You're just swirling it, and it looks cool when you look on the TV set. So it looks cool because that's yeah. why we're doing it. Yeah, yeah, basically. Fair yeah. enough. So that wasn't just yeah. wine wank while no. we're doing it. No. But a particularly good little challenge that if you really are into the, you know, really special is you, most of us have a dominant hand that we'll swirl with. So yeah, you with can try officer. now swap hands and try and do it with the other hand, and I actually really struggle with that sometimes. Go on. No, no, you can't put it down. You've got to actually go. hold it up. So that's the challenge, Nathan. By the end of tonight. So um, I noticed you had a massive sniff of it before you actually tasted it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like anything, you smell it first. If it smells good, you put it in your mouth. If you actually, you know, if it smells like tropical fruit and it smells uh, like all I can smell is passion fruit. There you go. Perfect. One is, of the key characteristics. Right or, it's yeah. No wrong ding, ding, ding. Perfect. <laughs> It's one of those characteristics of, of Sauvignon Blanc that's stainless steel fermented. And you, you said Adelaide Hills? The Absolutely. The vineyards in the Adelaide Hills? As far north of the Adelaide Hills as you can get. It's right on the cusp of the... Uh, so you can actually hop over the fence of the vineyard and you're up as close to the brass as you can bloody get. And um, vines have been there for a fair while? Or? Uh, planted in 1980. 1980. So some of the oldest... Um, Sauvignon Blanc vines planted, but age doesn't always mean better. Um, it just means that there's a pedigree, and obviously the, the fruit sells year in, year out. Since they started, we've been using this fruit for almost eight years from this vineyard. Mm. Yeah. 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 Looks really clear. Mm. There's no barrel contact on this wine at all. It's 100% stainless steel fermented. Right, and that, that has an effect on the color, obviously? Well, oak will actually add color. Um, obviously, if it's toasted, uh, Sauvignon Blanc itself is a very light-skinned grape variety, and we don't leave it on skin contact for very long. So you're not going to get a lot of color extraction. Very light hue, very bright um, brilliance to it. When you look through it, you get a little bit of a green hue to the edge. That shows its freshness. 
all these little key indicators that you look at it when you're really looking at wine. But at the end of the day, you know, you want to look at it if it's brown or oxidized. That's a telltale that it might not be in its best state of drinking. Number two, you smell it. If it smells like crap, it's most likely going to taste like crap, so don't put it in your mouth. <coughs> so we're smelling, we're, we're looking for fruit. Yeah, and what you smell is what you should taste. Like, yeah. you shouldn't actually smell one thing and taste something different. Yeah, it's um, very easy to drink. Ooh. Could be even a little bit on the dangerous side of Lent. Is that easy to drink? <laughs> That's one of our principles of winemaking, that you should actually drink a glass of wine. Now I'm feeling a little peckish. Oh, well. And we have an ethos at, at Zontes, which is? Always share food and wine with friends. So <laughs> how about we actually just order up some uh, chicken and chips? We're going to do a COVID strategy. Okay. We're going to ring someone. Yep. Because right. we can't go to the restaurant at the Can moment. we get a chicken and large chips, please? Yep. Cool. Perfect. Bang, bang. Dinner should be here soon. Ah, oh. oh, look at that. It's like it was prepared earlier. Perfect. Magic alive TV. There you go. <laughs> and there's, I guess, one thing with us too is it's all not fancy schmancy. You know, at the end of the day, wine is a, is a food product. It should be shared with friends and loved ones at the table with food. It's the benefit that we reap from our day. So simple things with simple minds. Cook chook. If it was a hot day right now, we'd be drinking fresh oysters from uh, across the bay and a bunch of uh, Spencer Gulf prawns, but it's cold, so we're going to have a bit of cooked chook. Right, I was expecting to a uh, cheese platter or nah. some quince paste. Nah. Or too busy making wine. Too busy making wine? Yep, so we got a bit of a cooked chook, and thankfully they also know that I'm not allowed to touch knives, so it's all cut up. All right. Let's dig in. So I thought it was a wine show, but it's all no, turned, it's turned a into a bit of a feature. Well, unfortunately, oh, is there, look, we've got a comment. Is there any truth to only pairing white with chicken and fish and red with red meat? What's your opinion? Uh, my answer to that is no. Wine can be drunk with everything and anything. And we may prove that when we get to the chocolate factory. Exactly. Right. <laughs> so it is a myth that white meat, white wine, red meat, red wine? Or is there some truth it, to it? it it's it's, it's, it's a, a historical thing. So if you look at where a lot of white wine came from, those foods that we actually think traditionally to have with them would have been the local cuisines that they would have had with those. Anyhow, you know what I mean? Um, when you look at Sauvignon Blanc, it comes from the Loire Valley. They used to eat lots of smelly cheeses and shellfish. You know, it's the home of um, uh, when you actually cook the chicken in oil. What's it called? Come on, Nathan, you're not no, helping I'm not, me. I'm not the foodie. Come on, comment. <laughs> Come on, what's yeah. it called? Yeah, simple, simple thing, what's thing is, that? what is the thing with chicken and oil? Yeah. yeah. Southern fried chicken. Southern yeah. fried chicken. <laughs> the the big good. thing with Sauvignon Blanc, <laughs> thus the label, like Excalibur, it comes because we have acid wine. We want it rapier sharp, and that's the length that we look for on it. That acid in that wine is there to cut through the fat. So fatty chicken, you know, goose, any kind of meat like that, it's just there to help cleanse your palate. This has got lots of fresh herb in the stuffing. Um, herb, herb. Uh, you know, there's chicken salt. Oh, okay, Go for it. Just eat. Yep. Yeah. At the end of the day, Sauvignon Blanc's there to help cleanse your palate, and it's a refresher. It helps acidulate your palate and get you going. Yeah. And I'm intrigued to see um, if it tastes any different. Yeah. So that's. I mean, that's one of the things that um, you know, as a as a as a non winemaker, um, I really I really love that um, concept of when you're when you drink wine, you can it does change the whole experience when you have it with food. So, you know, we always talk about, you know, make sure you taste the wine first before you actually put the food in your mouth. And yeah. then, so you've got a feeling for what that tastes like. And then, you know, put the food in your mouth, have a mouthful and, you know, and then swirl a bit of wine in there with it so that you can actually get that real experience of the of the two things working together. So, mm. it's, um, and uh, James Lyons, congratulations. You've won the uh, Excalibur. Is that what I'm supposed to say? Fantastic. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> one as it said. One comment wins a bottle of wine. One comment wins a bottle of wine. Uh, Love it. He, he would be loving it. <clears throat> and it's personal preference. It's one of the things I love too, since moving to Australia in 95. Really good, fresh, bright Grenache. Served chilled in the summer with chili prawns. Absolutely a ripper. What? Love it. Grenache Absolutely great Grenache served nash. chilled. Yep. Yep. Um, oh, hang on, I forgot something too. You moved here in? 95. From? Canada. Right. So I'm mm. still at large. I haven't actually been kicked out of here yet. I'm happily a quasi Aussie. Yeah, you threw you threw me with chicken and chips for white wine, but um, 
Yeah, it actually works. It works. Yeah. Absolutely. There's and, no rhyme uh, It's somewhat cool. better than eating cheese. <laughs> Cheese, cheese is good, but it doesn't always go with wine. No. no, and people do make the mistake of getting an expensive bottle of wine whilst they're out and they're eating a beautiful meal, thinking that it's the best bottle of wine they've ever had. They go buy it from the bottle shop without eating the beautiful meal, drink it, and it doesn't taste anything like it. Totally. The experience yeah. that you share with people, the food, the timing. I mean, over the years I've had a chance to, um, <laughs> I love Adam with the chocolate factory, I've had a chance to taste our wines in many different countries all over the world, and they all have a different taste sensation. The way it tastes here today versus um, Toronto when it's in the middle of winter or a hot day in Hong Kong, they all have a different experience. Even though you you know, tend to advise people to drink white wine chilled, sometimes we drink it too cold in this country. I tend to drink everything at cellar temperature like it is right now. You know, um, As you cool it down too, that's where the flavors dissipate and don't taste as much. To a totally different taste with the oily, fatty chicken. Mm, it brings yeah. up more of that herbal base to it. Um, you know, to me, there's that fresh herb, some thyme, tarragon characteristics, a bit of licorice. Mm. So good. No, it's good. <laughs> but you, you, you have no. Oh, you're hanging on to yours. All right, you, you, you can do that. Yours. Jerry, no, Jerry. <laughs> it's Jersey. But it's all good. The one thing you have noticed, it's all about courses. Yeah, we've got courses. Courses for horses. We're courses. Yeah, excellent. We like courses by one. Well. Beautiful. What are we moving on to? Yeah, we've, we've had a taste. We've Beautiful. had something to eat. Jimmy's won a bottle. Perfect. Yeah, so, uh, Canto. So, far, can we go? Are we going Canto first? Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. go Canto. Canto? Yeah. Mm. Song. Canto. Right. Song. Our Italian blend. So, so let's start there. Let's start. Tell... Let's tell the um, punters about Canto. It might not be a variety that everybody knows. No. Well, or is it a popular variety? Uh, no, Sangiovese uh, San is known, um, as is Lagrain and as, as was Barbera. So um, Canto for us has always been about um, the, the blending of Italian varieties. So um, we've had, uh, historically, we used to do Sangiovese Barbera. We've had Sangiovese Barbera Lagrain. Um, this particular vintage, is, uh, which is a 2017, is um, our Sangiovese Lagrain. And um, so for us, this has always been a wine that's about blending together to create a beautiful Mediterranean wine that's going to go with um, pasta and pizza. Absolutely. Right. So once again, amazing label. Mm. Something different and uh, full, full mm -hmm. so everybody can see, full of metals. Bling, we can tell you we made bling. good wine. Oh, do they actually need anything? Yeah. Yeah. The metals, they yeah. do. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a, it's a real, it's a, it's a real interesting one. I mean, there, there's a, there's a lot of wine shows around the world and um, uh, you can, as a wine brand, make the decision not to invest in them, um, not to, not, not to enter in wine shows, but we, we believe that it's really important to, um, allow people to have um, the knowledge of three, three third-party support. So for us, it's about getting other people to review our wine and say it's really good. Is it, un is it unusual to have a full ring on them like that? Well, that costs us a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was bri bribery, was it? Bri well, wine, wine shows are independently judged for a quality parameter, and what it does is it shows that if we can consistently get gold medals in multiple shows, then our standard is higher. And it's, it's something that we want to do because... A consumer doesn't have to spend energy looking at it. If it has one or two gold medals on it, then you know. If it wins one, it's like you and I. You and I can win a race any day as long as everyone else falls over first. Well, you know what I mean? It, it would want to be yeah, Stephen Bradbury, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, that's for most of the ones the race, I but <laughs> Canto has always been about that expression of of that of Italy. Every Italian red grape variety has this sense of place, this real savory sort of. Um, secondary character in their red grape varieties. And they are absolutely fantastic with food. And if you've never even tasted an Italian wine, you taste this and immediately you get this, this link between Italy and these grapes. So for me, it's always been making what Anna said, just a great blend. And that's where the name Canto comes through. It's like a three piece quartet, quintet coming together to make the perfect song. And, and it's balanced and drinkable and food friendly. Have Italian wines been pop popular in Australia? Or is it something that's evolved recently? Or, like, um, I, I wouldn't, most people, Shiraz, Cab, Merlot, 
Yeah, Sangiovese was first brought into the country in 78 by Montrose. And um, from there, the Lloyd family really in McLarenville pioneered Sangiovese as a variety. It's one of the very first alternate grape varieties, if we have to talk alternate, that came into Australia. But it does have a, a strong foothold now, uh, Italian grape varieties over the other Mediterranean countries. But for me, what we really focus on in, in these Mediterranean varieties and blends that we produce is about the fact that most of those wines that come from around the Mediterranean are much more food friendly. They're made in a style that are lighter, that are, um, they, they marry with food and they acidulate and they give you that ratatouille moment, you know, when the rat gives a little bit of herb on the toast of yeah, the yeah. cheese. Yeah, yeah. So, um, definitely, uh, definitely for eating. Yep. And what, what would we put together with it? Well, I think well, we should. We're talking I think, Italian. I, I think we should do another COVID moment and ring for a pizza. What a pizza? Yeah. Fine. All right. All right. Oh, uh, Adam. Hey. Uh, uh, any plan? Anna. Why well, he's on the phone already? Yeah. That's a pizza. Can we get a pizza? Uh, any plans no, for no Spanish anchovy, but basically well, fully loaded. We funny just you should want say that. Um, I didn't. We, yep. we actually. I know. Perfect, I can see that Adam put that question. Cool. Um, I, Jesus, oh, that was fast. That was the fastest pizza delivery you've ever seen in your life. Ah. Um, uh, well, the answer to that is, Adam, we actually do make some a Spanish variety. Two. And? Yeah. Well, with the last name of Rey, which is Spanish for king, we've, we've <laughs> always... He uh, reminds Anna. us regularly. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah, really. Yeah. Okay. Um, we, we, we do McLaren Bell Grenache, but we do it in a style that's very much in that Spanish-esque, light, warm climate Pinot. You know, less oak. It's more bright acid structure. You can actually serve it slightly chilled. Our, our blackberry patch, which is labeled Cabernet, is a Cab Tempranillo, which is a spin on the wine blends that you get from the Navarra region of Spain. And uh, last year we launched four organic wines, and we actually make a straight Tempranillo in that. And we also do a rosé in that range, unlike our Scarlet Ladybird, which is in our core range of rosés that we started in 2004. We actually do one there that's Portuguese in style. So it's very dark red and bone dry. Like it'll actually Put suck the moisture out of your mouth. So a different style than what we actually do with the Scarlet Ladybird, which is much more Provence-ish in style and suits sort of um, more Thai Asian influenced foods. So there you go. So yes, Spain, Portugal is the next one to target. Mm. I do. I do like to keep reminding Brad occasionally that um, every time he gets into one of these little things of creating more wine, that you know there is a cost associated with it. Right. That's the accountant in me. I can't help myself. Structure. So it's the, the the accountant versus the winemaker. Mm. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. We will make that. No, we can't afford yeah, to. Correct. But who wins? Oh, well, yeah. Unfortunately, very often Brad does. But right. uh, then he also has to promise me that he's going to sell it. So it's okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. I, I, what I picked up from there was light, mm -hmm. Pinot, Pinot being one of my favourite mm -hmm. varieties of wine, mm -hmm. because it's what we learnt to drink wine on. Sure. And um, I still really like, I still really like it, and I like a lighter style of wine. We are very spoiled, McLaren Vale. We've got all the strong Shirazes you could ho hope for, and then down the southeast, obviously the Cab Sabs as well. But a lighter style of wine does it go better with food? Well, have some and have see. Have some pizza right. and try it. Put it, it in your mouth. Think. Put it in your goblet. Okay. A big thing, so Sangiovese, which is the primary grape variety that Chianti produces, um, that would be the number one sort of atypical wine that you get out of Italy would be a Chianti, Chianti Classico. Sangiovese is that grape variety that goes with, through with it. And that's that choke cherry, that, that cherry precept that you were comparing to like Pinot Noir. Um, it has plums to it and things like that. Lagrain is actually from northern Italy. Um, it's a grape variety that's the birth between Pinot Noir and Shiraz. So wow. again, there's a link to what you just sort of described in their line tones. And that adds a little bit more flesh to this than the style that we used to produce with the Barbera. Um, but yeah, in your mouth, a bit more drying tannins, a little bit more of that cedary sort of drawing, drawing tannin base to it. What happens though when you have it with the food? Disappears. Yeah. Smooth, easy to drink. People who struggle to drink wine or haven't got a palate yet, mm -hmm. it would be great for them. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think that it, um, if they don't like a really strong Shiraz and uh, they prefer something lighter, then this for the pizza 
Maybe you could go wrong. No. Mm. Not ma- anything that doesn't really get. Or bolognese. Any, any, like anything tomato Pasta based. Pasta, pizza. Tomato based. Anything. Just, Italian? Yeah. Any, Italian. Yeah. Yep. The other thing, I guess. So, um, where do the grapes come from? Oh. So, the, this one, we Obviously use. Obviously, not Italy. No. <laughs> we, we actually use Flurio on our labels as a geographical indication. And Flurio includes McLaren Vale, Langlon Creek, and the Adelaide Hills because that's where the majority of our fruit grows. Yep. Specifically, though, our, our Mediterranean grape varieties, they grow down along the Flurio and Langlon Creek. So, Gula Mouth, um, the Sangiovese, the Lagrain, our Vermentino, and our Prosecco all grow down in that area because it's southern exposure towards uh, the Antarctic. Yep. Cool, dry, and it doesn't get the same sort of late afternoon sun exposure. So it really suits these great products. Excellent. Well, and uh, surprise Winner, me. winner. Adam. Oh, oh the nice. Of Canto. I think he would really appreciate it. He's uh, quite fond <laughs> of the pizza I heard too, so he might, <laughs> uh, he might go right. Ah, here we go. We'll let Anna oh, say how long wait. she decants for. Luke's jumped on board. We've gone AWOL tours. Um, by the way, uh, love what you guys are doing. Um, how long would you be decanting for? Well, um, as, as terrible as this may sound, most of these wines we drink straight out of the bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, decanting, is, it, it's a process of aeration of the wine to um, bring out, um, bring out flavours. And it, and it works incredibly well, particularly with eight more aged wines. Yeah. Um, because you're you're really trying to you know this, these the wines may have been in bottle for a number of years and what you want to do is make sure you bring back some of that fruitiness um, and, and and freshness into it. Um, in in the case of the wines that we're drinking tonight, they're all uh, 2017, uh, 2018, so they're really qu- still quite young um, and are very they're designed for drinking. Um, yeah. the, the reality is that's why cans is going to work really well for us. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, keep the so, comments coming. Yeah, keep the comments coming. They're great. And uh, thanks very much for that. I've got another question on decanting. Okay, so you're, you're saying these wines are to drink now. Mm-hmm. Will they sell it? Yeah. So if I put this in my mm-hmm. cellar for five years, I would then decanter it? Again, if, you, if, if you were kept in a room... Is it a myth? No, no. No, no. It's a genuine Perfect thing. Perfect thing with coronavirus. If you're locked up in a room for 14 days... And then we open the door and let you out. Yeah, you're gonna go crazy. Same thing with a wine. If it's sitting there for five years, not touched, not moved, it's gonna be a bit slow out of the gates. And then when it opens up, it's gonna open up. So you 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 benefit from actually opening a wine that's been sitting around for quite a bit of time. The benefit for us under screw cap with five years, you start to get that sort of bottle evolution that you get under cork within about 12 to 15 months. But like I said to you earlier when we were talking, you know, for us, we look at ourselves as, as farmers. You don't age your carrots. You don't age your potatoes. It's a choice. What we do with our price point is make wines that are drinkable, that over-deliver at price point that you can enjoy right away. And if you can curb your appetite from opening them, then let them go. We opened up wines 15 years old just mm. in July. And, yeah, wonderful bottle evolution to them that we could see in it. And then uh, Marty, our assistant winemaker, and myself opened up another bottle of 2009 against the current vintage 17s that we were bottling, and um, we actually screwed them up. So, All right. you know, the uh, amount of variation that you get under screw cap isn't as great as what you would get when you're actually looking at uh, cork. All right. Yeah. yeah. What we've been waiting for? Yeah, more oh, red wine. No, actually, I've been waiting for Canto. That's my favourite. That's waiting. okay. You waiting. guys can move to the Shiraz. I was waiting. <laughs> I was waiting for the pizza. But the pizza's good. The pizza's good. So here's the thing. Chocolate factory. Yeah. Tell tell me the history and story behind the chocolate factory. Okay, there's no chocolate in it. <laughs> it's a true story. There's true, no true chocolate. No Everyone chocolate asks us, "Is there chocolate in the chocolate factory?" No chocolate. But you taste chocolate when you drink it, though, don't you? The the big thing, I guess, the reason that we came up with that name is in McLarenvale, unlike the Barossa Valley or Langlon Creek, we were always taught that that the McLarenvale produces the middle palate of Australian Shiraz. It's long, soft milk chocolate tannins. Whereas with 
the Barossa Valley, the Langhorne Creek, they tend to be more dark chocolate tannins. So when you eat those chocolates, you can feel those textures. So it's not really a, a flavor sensation. That chocolate character that you get in some of the wines is actually the oak influence on the grape variety. So when you put toasted oak with Shiraz, one of the flavor precepts is actually a bit of chocolate. Do you want to do the fancy? Oh, I've got my watch on tap. Righty, tighty, lefty. Yeah, lefty, know, Lucy, you're going to do this, aren't you? You're going to do this. <coughs> oh, no, oh, yeah. Watch out. Oh, oh, this is the head. other reason right, I wear ready? white. Yeah. It works better if you've got a bare arm because it grabs grip right. But. Yeah, this is my mind storm. There you go. It's all about shit. Everyone wants the. That was amazing. That was amazing. <laughs> that was, that was, golf that clap. Was. Everyone golf clap. Everyone wants the. Uh, you can't get the romance out of a, out of, out of a screw cap, so we decided we'd nothing like putting we'd, a bottle we'd go with your performance legs. instead. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the chocolate factory just comes from that. That to us, the McLaren Bell is that middle palate, generous, fruit-driven, milk chocolate textured. Um, and uh, where where do the um, grapes come from? All over the McLaren Bell. Yeah. Yeah. We have um, so four main hang growers. On. All over the McLaren Bell. Yes. Not one single block? No. no. Nope. So, and grape varieties differ from like McLaren Vale, not McLaren Vale? If you want to, when you look at the, what well, I'll use sense of place, the French use the term terroir. All right. So, sense of place, the relationship between the grape variety, the soil, and the soil type that it grows in and its sense of place, which is sunlight, heat, diurnal period, rainfall, all these other aspects play on the flavor precept. For us, as, as the chefs or the artisans, it's the subregions. I don't want to get into that. I don't want to turn McLaren no, no. into subregions because that's something that we utilize. Consumers still need to learn that we exist. Honestly, uh, in Australia, great. They understand McLaren Bell. When we get off the world, people just still don't understand how vast this country is. If you look at Sellex Hill versus down at Blewett Springs, Blewett Springs is this little pocket of sand. It stays warmer at night because it doesn't actually get the gully winds. So the fruit has a different flavor profile due to that. The Golden Mile of McMurtry Road has that milk chocolate development up towards the top of uh, Seaview Heights. When it ripens, the vineyards that we use up there is a real coffee bean, sort of cocoa character. Um, down towards Wollonga Hill, you get more briary and um, interesting tones that come through. What kind of bear on grizzly black rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very Canadian question. I like that. <laughs> Never grizzly. It'll eat you. I'll go a brown bear or cinnamon. Cinnamon. Cinnamon bear. Yeah. So um, is yeah, that, he's already won a prize. So yeah, we actually we have Jimmy. <laughs> there's there's four different <laughs> growers that we have in four different subregions, I guess, and then those are the components that we use to ensure that we get the sense of place of the overall growing region or the geographical area of McLaren Bell. Excellent. Now come on, you, yeah. Chocolate's yeah. been sitting. So there again, so what are we having with this? What Everyone goes. Yeah. We're actually having chocolate fondue. I thought, what the hell? Let's go for it. Everyone wants to have. And there's, again, people think that you have to have dessert wines with dessert. You don't have to. Have a red wine with dessert. Give it a shot. People say that chocolate goes with red wine. I'm, I personally don't think it is a match, but let's give it a shot and try. Hannah? Ladies first. All right. I'm going to go blackberry because I think that's, oh, uh oh, we've taken away the heat. And, <laughs> yeah. and it's, and it's re, re solidified. There you go. That's no good. I can't see that. There you are. I'm going to go raspberry. The one thing you'll notice with our. Shiraz is we pick it a little bit earlier on in the ripening period where we have higher acids, so it's quite um, punchy, crisp, and fresh. It's like when you eat fresh fruit, you know, mm -hmm. at the back of your palate when you drink the wine, you get that real puckery, sort of lovely character to it. It's that cleanliness that I love about it. Um, I don't want a big, lush, lacquerel, milk coating style of wine. I want one that's a little bit more, mm. um, a little bit more generous in in fruit, and then has a lovely finish that's clean. Anna, yep. chocolate wine? It works for me. Yeah? Yeah. Look, like I said that's earlier, right. I'm, I'm really not that, oh, watch out, we've got, we've got the flames, the flames coming in Mima. to reheat our very awesome blue set. All right, fine, do it. Yeah. So, hmm. going back to the um, four different 
varieties, or the same variety, but from four different blocks, let's say. Mm -hmm. Yep. What, who else does that? Oh, there's many producers that would actually have multiple stores. Maybe yeah. a very famous? Yeah, yeah, Darren Berg will do it. Yeah. We're aware of um, yeah. Fox Creek will have multiple suppliers. Prince Hill, Mr. Riggs. Most of us, n there's, there's a few. Australia is not a place when I got here that when I got here, most of us wineries made wine, growers grew grapes. It wasn't the stoic sort of um, European standard of estate grown, estate bottled. Uh, it's moved to that over the last 15, 20, 30 years. But um, yeah, to me, it's, it's um, there are many multi-generational growers that we deal with, that we have dealt with, and we always will deal with them because they've got Brilliant. great dirt and they know what they're doing. And yep. uh, the tricks of the trade to work with Mother Nature to produce the, the quality of fruit we want is that, that little tweak, that twist that we use within our brand. So um, the punters can win a bottle of the chocolate? They can. Factory, I got 50 seconds. Get your comments in there. To um, Jerry, can you put a comment in for me? <laughs> um, <laughs> Questions, comments? I, I, I really, I, I must say, I really like it. And uh, going with chocolate as well, I didn't think chocolate and wine actually mixed. I thought it was a bit of a myth or just a way of people selling their chocolate in McLaren Vale. Mm. More, more so than it actually went well with. Yep. But um, I must say, the fruit and chocolate and wine. It's a nice way to finish on. I mean, I look. I always talk about our chocolate factory as a black forest cake. Yeah. It's it's yep. it's your cherries. It's your it's your creamy Got palette, and it's your and your mocha. So mm -hmm. what better what better thing to put with a black forest cake than a little bit more chocolate and a little oh, bit and a little more bit berries? More, yeah, a bit more berries. Yep. Okay, so um, before we wrap up, sure. Tell us something that's coming in the future for Zontes. Well, we've already told you. The tell cans. Us, tell us something else. Oh, we've got oh, lots of different stuff we're doing. Let's see what else we're doing. Ah, the champagne. Well, mm. not champagne. It's not champagne. You're not allowed to call it that. Not legally. Our sparkling white. Oh, hang on. Oh, oh, we, got, we missed that one. Oh, we had a, we had a late. We had a winner. There. And a winner. Ads, <laughs> of course. Oh, there you go. He's, he's, what's he the best ever vintage of chocolate factory? <laughs> it got in just in time. <laughs> you know what? That's the one thing I could have to. I'd have to say. Hmm. There, there isn't one year that would be epically better than any other vintage. The thing that we have with this wine is that the, the volume that we produce it at, the consistency that we have, every year I look at what we do, I think, oh, we're not going to be able to beat it, and the next year it comes out, and it just keeps performing year in and year out. Um, per, my personal preference is always the odd-numbered vintages that we have because they're, it's more in balance than a late bloomer. If you drink it quick, drink the even years. So there you go. Okay. Huh? Okay. Well, I must but say. Talk about. Oh no, no. So yeah. So what's yeah, what's happening that's new that. is um, we uh, we are ha have we've actually got it. Already. Yes, we do. We do have yep. it. Is a, a Tasmanian uh, fruit. Yep. Method traditionnel. Ten years on gross lees. It is a champagne. A champagne. Well, no, not, no, I'm no, sorry. No. Sorry. It, let me refrain. A brew. A brew. Method so traditional. Method so traditional. made like champagne. Ooh. Knock it Ten up. years old. And so we've, we've done, we've done some... When is this available? Water ferries. It's available now. It's available now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Available uh, now. I can, see, I can see a home delivery heading toward my house. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've, we have some fun. I mean, one of the, one of the things I absolutely... Um, what's the best thing about working in the Vale? Uh, it's the lifestyle. I... I, I um, sorry, I'm going to go tangent on that. I'm going to answer that question, which was... Oh, Best thing about working in the Vale. Honestly, what's the best thing about living in the Vale? Um, community. I, I, we live in this amazing community. Um, I mean, Nathan, his daughter is the same age as mine. Um, they go to the surf club, and you know, we it, it's it's fantastic. It's it's a it's the Vale, and 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 just to clarify, McLaren Vale is actually to the coast and all the way into the into the hills. Um, it's. It's it's a wonderful community. I mean, I just got I got, uh, just I got stuck in France. I was actually over in Paris when um, the government announced that we all needed to get our backsides home, and um, I mean it was beautiful. I mean it was a wonderful trip, and you know traveling around Europe's amazing. But I, you know, you come home and you, what better place to live? I mean, you know, yeah. it's it's been amazing, and um, yeah. So so uh, Luke, in answer to that question, I just. 
love Macan Vale. I think it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. I'm going to go as far as to say that uh, we happen to be driving through McLaren Vale this afternoon, and Jerry and I are both driving down in the van, just driving through the main street, reminiscing about all the good times, all the great people that we've met in McLaren Vale, growing up there, going to school in Wollonga, and um, just spending a lot of our childhood in McLaren Vale. I played footy for McLaren Vale for a while as well. And um, just the friendships and the, the people, how warm the people are. And um, I guess what I found about McLaren Vale too is um, they're not competing against each other. The wineries, they're, they're there to help and they um, see other people's success as their success. Yep, because um, I asked the question about the cube when the cube was built. What is that going to do for other, win other wineries? And, uh, and everybody I asked said straight away, it's going to bring more people to McLaren Vale. Yep, it's yep. going to benefit everybody. Absolutely. They're yep. going to come there, they're going to see the art, and then they're going to come here and taste wine. Yep. So it was, people weren't actually worrying about jealousy or anything like that. It's a community of people working together and nice people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, sorry, the, oh, next, question. the next question is, uh, when do we think the cellar door... Well, we're accessible, um, if I want to use that word. So um, uh, if you if you want to come pick up some wine, just ring our main number, uh, 08 um, And uh, Brad, Brad dropped in on the weekend because I made him. <laughs> yep. Um, so no, you can actually come in and uh, do takeaway, no problems. Um, but unfortunately, Obviously you we've can just got to work through them. Oh, you can absolutely buy online. Yeah, yep. no, so um, head online and um, buy some wine. Um, Brad and I were having a little chat earlier, and we haven't told Alice yet, so she's going to freak out on us if she's watching this. But um, we did decide that if um, we'll try and put up something ASAP. So if you buy a bottle of the Sav, the Canto, and the Chocolate Factory uh, as a little three pack, we we'll, um, might uh, throw in a uh, Magnum of Lake Doctor with it. So 2015 for vintage. those people that are watching. Right, hang on, hang on. So they, all, all they have to do is buy what we've tasted tonight. Excalibur, a yep. Canto, and a Chocolate Factory is and, a three-pack. And they're yep. going to get a $50 And we'll throw in a Magnum nothing. of Lake Doctor. Yep. Of Lake Doctor. Yep. 2015. 2015 yep. vintage. Right. How many of them are there? Not very many. So, right. you know, we've, we're, we're assuming the, the numbers the host are would get, The host would get one. Of course. Oh, of, of course. course. Of course. Yeah, we had of to course. say that yeah, one, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> I thought I picked up the tab for dinner. Yeah. Right. Wow. Well. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, and answer to that question, I, I'm really hoping soon. Um, we, we've, we've unfortunately had to um, cancel two months now of, oh, three months now of uh, wind music. downs, uh, yeah. which is our live music and um, things that we do. So that's on the second and third Fridays of every month at the General. Um, great atmosphere, absolutely love it, and I'm really missing it. Um, I don't think we'll see those for a while because they sort of get up to 190 people, so that's probably pushing the number boundaries at the moment. But um, Yes. Well, for now. Maybe July, they say. Well, maybe July. Maybe July. Quite, anyway, happens. I've got to say, what an excellent first show. I think it had a lot to do with the guests. I didn't have to do a great deal at all. Thanks heaps <laughs> for coming on. We can and talk. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, well, you can. Well, I'm trying to cut you off. That's, that's right. And next week on SA Wine Weekly, we're going to have, and I think that you guys would agree, the Petrucci's. Known them for years. Fairly well-known. Those Italians who know what they're doing in McLaren Vale. They better Let's have go. an Italian variety in there. Otherwise. We are going to bring on Michael. Great, oh, great looking go. guy. <laughs> you know, abso absolutely great looking guy. I think the women might flock to this show just to see Michael. <laughs> but we're going to bring him on. Knows a lot about wine. Been in, in the vineyard since he was about three. Forever. Yeah. So we're really looking forward to Sabella. And um, we'll put some advertising out there. Eight o'clock next Wednesday. Thanks heaps for coming on, guys. Our pleasure. And thanks, thanks for, for tuning in, everybody. Thanks. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs>